You know, as Americans, we put a lot of stake in how we're, you know, all about the frontier and we have the frontier spirit. That, all that kind of stuff is kind of like in the history books now. But I think there is a group of individuals in America, they still have that innate sense of going somewhere where it's a bit rough and making a go of it. And that's kind of what I'm doing. Where else better to bust out than in Africa? It has incredible potential, relatively untouched. Look at South Sudan, a country the size of Texas has literally less than 200 kilometers of pavement. Virgin territory. So yeah, Africa is the last Wild West. My name's Tim Frecha. I'm an Africa-based documentary photographer and filmmaker. I've been working in Africa for about 25 years covering conflict and crisis. While the U.S. economy is headed south, I've been on this side, watching as young Americans come to Africa to seek their fortune. When I first met Ian Cox, he was a small-time hustler operating out of room back in Sudan. For about four, three, four years, I had an electronic shop in the middle of South Sudan. A place called Rumbek, probably the shittiest place in the world to do business. I've watched him develop from selling CD players to the natives into a major player. It should be 2,500, right? No, the, the lady who bought it in the it should be 6,000 plus BT. That's the standard rate. That's the standard rate, yes, for fitting the, any extra... Because I think I even got, I even got a quotation... I got 2,500, yes. I got a quotation from... Like, not from her, though. For somebody else? Yeah. So two different people gave me that same price. 2,500? Yeah. I can show you this. My friend Tim had a, a Land Cruiser in Juba that he needed to sell. And with my mailing list, I advertised it and sold it. And then from there, uh, one of the biggest uh, armed security companies in South Sudan contacted me to provide uh, 11 new Land Cruisers for a project they were just starting, which I did, and then it's kind of flowed on from there. Ian had been contacted by a company that had just landed a big demining contract in South Sudan for the United Nations. After decades of civil war between the mostly Arab Muslim North and mostly black Christian South, in 2005, the Bush administration successfully brokered an agreement ending the major conflict and creating separation and autonomy for the South. This led to a referendum in 2010 and independence for South Sudan in 2011. Despite its new status as a nation, South Sudan is still considered by some to be part of Sudan, which has long been on an embargo list for state-sponsored terrorism. We can't even, we can't even quote for a truck going to South Sudan. It's, uh, even though it's no longer part of Sudan? Yeah, it's, it's still uh, embargoed as a, um, as a country. This embargo makes it nearly impossible to import anything that could be considered military equipment, even those subcontracting to the UN. This is where Ian's years of experience navigating the murky, political, and social waters of Africa comes into play. Okay, all right, so basically, basically uh, this shouldn't be an issue. He's been contracted to move a convoy of military-grade vehicles from South Africa to South Sudan across seven countries in 30 days. On the 10th of December, they said, please get down to Joburg. The trucks are ready to roll. We need to get this thing on the road and try to get it done in three weeks. We should be planning to uh, move off uh, to Johannesburg, let's say tomorrow morning. I'm working one day down in the Mara. I get this call from Ian Cox. And he's like, dude, we're getting ready to do this wicked awesome road trip from uh, South Africa to Sudan. You in, man, you know, can you drive a big truck? And I said, I said, I can do it. I'm your man. When you're in the right wing, you're in the right thing. Jared's a good-natured redneck raised in Tanzania by missionaries. Despite his upbringing, he seems like an old-fashioned southern hick to me. Romney should be president. Really? Actually, actually, I take that back. We need to bring back Bush. Me and um, Tim and Ian jump on a plane to Joburg and uh, start looking at the equipment we're supposed to take to Sudan. They bought trucks sight unseen from a guy in South Africa. The guy assures TDI that the trucks are in good shape and ready to roll. It was kind of scary. It wasn't really what we were expecting. The equipment, the trucks were uh, in pretty shoddy condition. You guys are low budget, huh? 
We'll be uh, doing some uh, work on that exhaust pipe right there. I mean, you can sure tell this thing has done its time in the trenches. Yeah. But I'm gonna have to baby this thing up to Sudan. I think I brought my toolbox. But we need to put some tread on this thing if we're gonna be able to get up to Sudan with it. There's just no way around it. <laughs> Paperwork wasn't ready. Trucks were in a, an atrocious state. Up to Juba, I think realistically you're looking at a month minimum. And that's with trucks running good and not spending more than a few days at each border. And I, yeah, my gut feeling is this, these, are gonna, these two trucks are gonna cause the issue. Jared only has three weeks until he has to leave for another job, so it's essential that we get on the road ASAP. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Okay. How are you doing? Good. Good. Good morning, Clint. You we finally meet Clint, a sleazy used truck salesman who's supplying TDI with the vehicles for the convoy. He told them the trucks were ready, but they clearly aren't. As far as I can gather, they booked it in for Tuesday morning to go. Tuesday? Yep. Yeah. Well, Monday's a holiday. Fine, but on Tuesday, yeah. I mean, we were, we were talking about... So they, they, they won't do it sooner than that, Jared. Because, I mean, I've come down, I wouldn't have brought Jared down a week in advance and paid him his salary as a driver unless... I, I don't blame and, you, but... I, I've been here since Monday, you know? Uh, fair enough, yeah. So, uh, Clint is telling me Tuesday afternoon's the earliest. Um, I'm going to put pressure on Clint, you put pressure on Clint to see if it can happen. With Christmas rapidly approaching, Clint disappears on us and we're left to manage repairs with his mechanics. We're gonna fucking be here for Christmas, man. It could be worse, but I wanna get this show on the fucking road. The tire will come today, I'll put today. You'll put today, yeah? Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay. Alright. This thing is a pain in the ass to accelerate with. It's like you have to stand on the accelerator for to go anywhere. So stuck up. You don't have a break. <laughs> <laughs> this truck is very good. <laughs> it needs time now. I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure from. <laughs> It's insane, dude. The delays we're experiencing <clears throat> is just crazy. I mean, looks like we're not going to even be headed out to the border until Tuesday or Wednesday next week. <clears throat> that puts a uh, big hurting on us as far as timelines go. Meanwhile, Ian has money issues with his client. He's going out of pocket. I mean, they haven't actually paid, made any payment on any of these movements for this convoy, which shouldn't be a problem. They just need to do it today. I'm down here. Sure, it's disappointing. I arrive with a driver, and you know, if a driver has to wait two, three days, you know, not such an issue. But, and I'm also doing what I feel is probably a little bit of, you know, extra run around and work and pressurizing and kind of being your eye on the ground. That's not really part of what I'm quote supposed to be doing. And it's not like I'm going to sit here and say, hey, Hugh, I need a bunch of extra money. But I think, uh, I think it'd be fair, you know, if I can at least cover my extra living expenses and at least my... On New Year's Day, the timeline is completely you know, shot. We should have been in Juba by now. Still no money, and now we've lost Jared. So long story short, we spent a month in Joburg. My initial driver had to fly back because of timing. So I brought in another driver from the States who came highly recommended by Jared. You know, we'd love to have you. The, the catch is... I need somebody on the ground. I need you here in the, on the ground in Johannesburg by Wednesday. All right, sounds good. I am very excited and look forward to making this happen. See how this thing smells. I think this thing will work. I don't know, I heard rumor that Jared said it was a biohazard. It's okay, I drink the water straight out of the rivers in Appalachia. I hadn't got sick from that, I won't get sick from the matches, I bet. Final paperwork for the final vehicle didn't come through until a month after they said it would be ready. And we're free to hit the road. Start it up, get on the road here, and finally move out of Joburg. It's the day, today is the day.
problems arise before we're even across. What do you think I should do? Um, should I tell them the hard reality about this this trailer? I mean, these stands being like less than two inches off the ground. We're going to South Sudan, like that. They have to change this. Yeah. For South Sudan. Oh, for South Sudan, yeah. Well, even, even the bumps we have here, yeah, I mean, yeah. this thing will rip off. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely it will rip off. Yeah. It just comes. From what I've seen with the weight of this dozer on this trailer and driving yesterday, empty. The brakes yesterday were barely good enough to, to call acceptable for it running empty with this much weight on it. This is going to be a sketchy ride. These brakes are not going to cut it. All right. We cut the trailer's stands down to make sure they don't drag and press on towards South Sudan with a new harsh deadline of January 31st. Ian's still waiting for his money and we have more than 5,000 kilometers of Africa to cross in less than 30 days. 